inside the State House, State Capitol building in Tallahassee. Students demanding change, demanding action. And they're asking, where's Rick Scott, the governor of the state of Florida? Where's Rick Scott? 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 Where is he? So President Trump is set to meet in less than an hour from now with students, teachers, and parents all affected by some of the worst school shootings in modern world history, including some survivors. The White House says it's open to some tougher regulations on guns, but some gun control supporters say it's not enough. Let's turn to John Bussey, Fox News contributor, associate editor of the Wall Street Journal, with which this station shares common ownership. And Bob Bianchi, a defense attorney and former prosecutor, will talk about the news on this and the law on this. You were saying during the commercial break, this feels different from others of this kind? Yeah. So after Vegas, what did we hear from the political infrastructure? Hey, let's not address this in the heat of the moment. Too let's soon. wait. For, yeah, it's too soon. It's let's wait for, you know, tempers to, to calm down. And then guess what? It really wasn't addressed. Uh, it was kind of a method of sort of pushing it to the side. This time it looks like there's a, a bit more traction. These demonstrations in Florida, the visits to the White House. The question is how much of this is political theater, right? It's a observation on the part of the of our political structure that Hey, there does seem to be a little bit more traction. Moms and dads across the country are beginning to worry about sending their kids to school. That crosses. Beginning to. Exactly. Oh. It's, we're, we're well down that road, and we're reminded of that. And so, so uh, uh, this is an issue that crosses political lines very easily. So, how much of this is kind of having people into the White House, uh, uh, you know, observing this is really just a way of kind of. Giving, uh, having a political sop. Well, we'll find out. And we're, how will we find out? The question will be what gets done. Uh, bump stocks, is that going to be enough to placate a public that's getting more energized about this, that we've seen polls, uh, people want tougher gun laws? Bump stocks were kind of a ancillary part of the debate. Uh, it's not the gun itself. It's not the age. It's not the background checks. It's not the more substantial gun control that a lot of gun control advocates are asking for. The two matters, and Bob will get to you in a second, the two matters that the White House is discussing at this moment are two matters that the NRA has not come out in opposition to directly. Yes, that's right. The NRA... Uh, but I every, think there's nothing that they're coming out and saying, let's do this, that the NRA is again. Yeah, I think that they're listening to the NRA. They're also listening to gun advocates in the United oh, States, sure. of which there are many. Oh, uh, absolutely. And, and who worry that, look, bump stocks may seem ancillary to you, but guess what? They're not. That's the beginning, the tipping point. Then there's a cascade of legislation that restricts how I'm allowed to use my weapon. Um, uh, so the, the, the White House is hearing all of that. And you're right. The bump stocks is just not going to be an issue as far as the NRA is concerned. The question will be whether or not these demonstrations and other political activity actually do get more traction. And whether this time parents are saying, I, you know, I don't want more cops in, the, in the, the school. Yeah, that'll help to some extent. But are you talking to me about turning the hallways into shooting you know, galleries? I want there to be something that reassures me that when I send my kid off to school you know, in the morning that they are as safe as they possibly can be. The Florida legislature and state house uh, voted about two to one not to bring any sort of uh, assault weapons ban to the floor, even for discussion. Legally speaking, what in Washington can be done? Well, they're not going to be able to do anything to change the bump stock law, which is actually a legal uh, device because it still is a single fire, single trigger pull mechanism. This has been since 10 years, uh, the decision of the ATF. So the ATF can uh, outregulate the law. Congress passes the law and the executive branch of government, which the ATF is part of, interprets it and regulates it. So some of these suggestions that we can get them to ban it is going to cause a multitude of lawsuits. And this is just a legal analysis from the manufacturers of those things. They're going to say, wait a minute, this is a lawful thing that's already been ruled lawful. And as a prosecutor, I look at it and say, where's the enforcement? I can't possibly go to trial with somebody who has a bump stock. Now, well, on the other end, Shep, of that bump stock, sure, lots of rounds are being fired, but it's one round per trigger pull. I can't prove that case beyond a reasonable doubt to 12 jurors. It needs a congressional or legislative fix, period. People who are against gun control are saying widely on social media and other places that the gun control left is using these students as sort of another weapon 
uh, in, in their fight that these students are being used as pawns. Yeah. So this is a very emotional topic in the United States, uh, uh, e even without what just happened in Florida. Uh, the gun advocates and uh, the gun control groups. And I think that you're seeing that accelerated and being even in more inflammatory in the kind of remarks that you're seeing on uh, social media because this is an election year. We're in the middle of midterm elections. This is becoming a hotter hotter button issue and there are a lot of other hot button issues that the Republicans are concerned about uh, losing seats that might be on the edge uh, immigration issues women's issues now gun issues they're beginning to stack up you're seeing that reflected in the vituperative social media world you know, Shep, uh, as a former head prosecutor, one thing that is just a legal analysis that used to drive us crazy is political correctness, whether it's left or right. We would just sit there and say, we need to do our job. Please stop politicizing laws. Please give us something that we can actually prosecute, not regulations and rules that are ineffective or, or in, unable to prosecute in a courtroom. And it would seem like, politically, on both sides of the spectrum, I'm just a lawyer. I'm giving legal analysis. We would sit there when, when there was a proposal for new legislation, and we would go, oh, my God. Now, we're going to be left with the responsibility of carrying this out in the courtroom. And many times we couldn't because the legislation was completely ineffective. And we, we just used to be disgusted by how we were being twisted politically in the prosecutor's world. And I, and I hope that that doesn't happen here. You need something concrete. Right. Something enforceable. <clears throat> if the decision were made, we want to ban assault weapons. On, people don't like the phrase. But if long, long guns of this kind, if they want to say, no longer are we going to allow people who are not old enough to buy a beer or not old enough to drive a car, own one of these weapons, then you have to be specific about it, is what you're saying. Well, I have to prove a case to a jury to 12 people beyond a reasonable doubt. Right. And if there's confusion as to the law, every prosecutor knows already, if it's really un uncertain as to what the law is, the case probably won't even go to trial. Or if it does, you're not going to be able to prove the case. So it needs to be certain, clear, so that prosecutors can do their job effectively. Bob, John, thank you. Yes,